Deutsche Bank released its full set of earnings today and I'm joined now by the CEO, by Josef Ackermann. And Mr. Ackermann, thank you very much for joining us in the first place. Pleasure to be here. Let's talk about the fourth quarter and also in particular in, the, uh, in regards to the outlook. 10 billion, this is what you're aiming for. And a lot of analysts after the initial report of the preliminary figures were talking about, yeah, is, isn't there some kind of kitchen sinking going on? And also Andrew Jane was saying yeah, in the fourth quarter, he really had to struggle to really set up his unit to be able to perform and to deliver and um, to contribute to the 10 billion. What do you counter to these arguments? No, it's, it's no kitchen sinking by no means. But what we have done is, of course, after having had the hit from Postbank in the third quarter, it would have been a little bit strange to maximize the fourth quarter. So what we did, we expedited certain investment costs uh, uh, in the fourth quarter. And uh, I think I've given all the details. We were somewhat 1.2 billion uh, ahead of the old Deutsche Bank on the cost side. 750 million comes from the acquisition, so Postbank and Saloppenheim and others, and 450 million were cost element because we expedited certain integration projects. We could have done that in the first or second quarter of this year, but uh, we did so because uh, we wanted to start uh, 2011 with a clean paper. Mm -hmm. You were mentioning two particular growth markets, Asia and also Africa, more on a midterm um, basis. Do you rule out acquisitions then in the short term when you're saying you're really focused on execution now first and foremost? Absolutely. I mean, we have made now three acquisitions in the last few quarters. And uh, so post banks, Al Oppenheim mm -hmm. and the ABN AMRO uh, transaction in the Netherlands. So absolutely uh, focus on execution because mm. we do have now a very good uh, revenue level if you add it all up. So the 29 billion of this year plus uh, 2 billion from the uh, uh, write-off of, of Postbank mm. and then uh, the uh, Postbank edition this year, which we have consolidated only in, in January, uh, in, in December, we would start uh, the year already at uh, 35, 36 billion in the revenue. So. Mm. Uh, we just have to bring it now down to the bottom line, and, and that is an execution and management issue. Mm -hmm. Let's take a step back and look at the broad picture with the sovereign debt crisis still ongoing uh, in Europe at this very moment. Um, how concerned are you on the one hand and also on the other hand, what do you expect from politicians? Do you expect a really a shock and awe program that really should f finally really settle all market speculation to that regard, or what do you favor? I would not recommend the shock and awe uh, proposal because uh, what we need now is to calm down markets. I think we have seen a stabilization after uh, Portugal and Spain and Italy have been successful in tapping the capital market beginning mm -hmm. of January. Uh, I think we should continue that process, uh, but we should also behind closed doors, of course, position ourselves and prepare ourselves for additional measures if they are necessary. But I would assume that they will not be necessary mm -hmm. because trust has come back, uh, all the governments are taking the right measures now mm. and uh, we should we should give them time to to execute the way uh, they are uh, proposing it and and you see that markets have uh, have stabilized the euro has uh, uh, regained its strengths uh, and and i think that is uh, what we should do and and mm. uh, it, the, the more we have this cacophony and we talk about different measures, the more people think something is burning and, and they are not certain themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we are, we are confident that Europe, the Euro crisis is behind us. And, and, and in the different uh, uh, countries where uh, indebtedness has been too high, they are bringing it down, they are working on that. If in some years from now, some uh, countries uh, one or two may still be struggling, then I think we should talk about measures, but that is uh, a long-term perspective. Mm -hmm. In terms of the measures, uh, would you favor uh, taking haircuts or being offering haircuts or enforcing haircuts really in terms of a restructuring um, if it really comes down to that uh, point or are you firmly against it? What you cannot do is to enforce haircuts ex post because mm. the commitment and, and the expectations of part market participants were different. But going forward, uh, what you are now doing, you will have coll collective action clauses in the uh, contracts and then people know there's a higher risk. And mm. these countries where the indebtedness is higher uh, and they have more difficulties in servicing the debt burden, they will have to pay higher interest. So that is part of uh, the discipline markets are putting on weaker countries. And I think that's positive. Mm -hmm. 
Also, one issue at the moment, we do really see kind of like a wildfire spreading in the north of Africa, really social and uh, civic unrest uh, in various countries now being really culminating um, in Egypt. What kind of impact does this have materially on your business in the first hand, but also perhaps on your clients that are also doing business there? We saw an awful lot of fluctuations in the Leone share price, for instance, um, which is doing business in Egypt. Mm. Well, it's a major concern, but more for us it's more a political concern. I mean, if you have instability in the region, uh, that would be uh, very, very negative. Uh, the exposure of Deutsche Bank into this region is relatively small, so mm. uh, that is not something which concerns me. But, of course, from a political point of view and from a uh, point of view of having another uh, dislocation in a major region, which could reach uh, and have an impact on, on uh, other markets uh, globally could be a problem. I mean, mm. the uh, social uh, equilibria and, and uh, uh, social justice in countries uh, could come up uh, in, in, in different regions as a topic. And, and mm. I think, therefore, uh, it's very important uh, that we uh, control this, uh, uh, these problems and these riots uh, in, in, a, in a politically friendly way and, and, and without having to use military forces. Mm. Final question. 2013, your contract is going to uh, be running out. Are you um, in a firm position and uh, with all your energy to serve out the full contract length? My contract expires in 2013 and, and uh, I cannot uh, say anything else. I don't know how my health will develop, but right <laughs> now I feel fit to, to do the job. I'm, I'm okay, let, let me rephrase then. Um, do you think that Deutsche Bank is ready for a non-German speaking CEO, perhaps after you are serving out your 2013 term? Well, we are a global bank and, 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 uh, and uh, I think that's uh, something the supervisory board has to decide. That's not my, that's not my decision. But in general, since you're talking or speaking English in your, in this, uh, in your council anyhow, um, is, is, that, is that feasible? Oh, you have to ask the supervisor. Well, I, I'm not in a position to say okay. that. Uh, I, will, I speak German and, and I felt it was a, an advantage for me. Uh -huh. uh, but maybe the supervisor board sees it differently going forward. But that's uh, not my decision. Okay, Mr. Ackermann, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.